If you've been keeping up with all of the AI tools that have been released this year, you've likely come across GitHub's Copilot. Copilot is a code completion tool that uses machine learning to predict what code you're about to write before you've written it. So it's a bit like predictive text on your phone, but for writing code. Well, recently, AWS have come out with a competing product to Copilot, and they call it Code Whisperer. And one of the great benefits of AWS's version is that unlike Copilot, this is actually completely free for developers to use. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to set up and how to use AWS Code Whisperer inside VS Code. <laughs> AWS Code Whisperer works in a very similar way to Copilot, except instead of being backed by OpenAI's machine learning technology, it's provided entirely with AWS. So that makes it available to anyone with an AWS account, and you don't have to worry about AWS sending your code off to any third parties. So that makes it an easier choice for businesses that already have their data shared with AWS. Code Whisperer still offers the same functionality of code prediction and code completion that Copilot does. And for my own usage of this, I haven't really noticed much difference in the quality of the suggestions or anything like that. Code Whisperer supports a ton of programming languages, including Java, C Sharp, Python, TypeScript, and JavaScript. And it works with a bunch of different IDEs. So it works with SageMaker Studio, but also JupyterLab, which is a very popular Python IDE. Um, and then the IDE that we're going to be looking at in today's video, which is VS Code. So let's get started. Open up an instance of VS Code and go to the Extensions tab on the left-hand side here. And in the Extensions Marketplace, if you search for AWS Toolkit, you'll be able to install the AWS Toolkit. Now the AWS Toolkit comes with a bunch of AWS specific features that allow your instance of Visual Studio Code to talk to AWS. The first time you'll install this, you'll need to make sure you've got some AWS credentials on your machine. That usually happens through a .aws configuration file. Um, there's a link in the description below if you don't have AWS credentials stored on your machine. But I'm just gonna continue because I've got that set up. And you can see here that if I open this Explorer, I can see, I can access my AWS instance through Visual Studio Code. So here I've got the Lambda functions. These are real Lambda functions that I have deployed to my AWS instance. Um, and then down here, you can see the different regions. And at the bottom here, if you look underneath developer tools, you've got uh, this Code Whisperer box down here. So if we open up Code Whisperer and click on Start, you can see it brings up this drop down menu where we can set up how we're going to authenticate with Code Whisperer. We're going to authenticate by Code Whisperer using this top menu option here, which is use personal email to sign up and sign in with an AWS builder ID. So, this is actually a different authentication method to the AWS credentials that we were using in the Explorer, but we can go through it, it gives us a link and it gives us a web page we can open up to authorize this request. So we'll step through this, and I'm gonna put my email address into this form here. Next, it will ask you for your name, so I'm just gonna type my name in there, and then it will send off an email to you so you can get a confirmation code to verify your email address. So I'll just paste in there the verification code that I got from my email, and then we can set a password. and click this Create AWS Builder ID. So this new AWS Builder ID is what we need in Visual Studio Code to put into the toolkit to allow it to talk to AWS. So now when we go back to VS Code, you can see that the Code Whisperer dialog has opened up and it's now saying pause auto suggestions, which means this is actually running now. So if I hover over this, you can see I'm pausing and starting auto suggestions. So let's go ahead and do some code whispering. So I'm gonna create a TypeScript file in here. TypeScript is one of the languages that Code Whisperer supports. And if I just type in function and then double, the word double, then you can see this grayed out text here is predicting what it thinks a function that doubles a number should look like. So you can see here it's returning the number that we're passing in multiplied by two, which is exactly what a doubling function should do. We could also try treble, which again, it will give us a suggestion and it would say, do you want to treble the number that you've passed in? 
So again, this is very similar to AWS Copilot, where it will do these auto suggestions based on what the machine learning thinks that your code should be doing. We can also do this with types. So if I create a type called user, you can see that as soon as I open this bracket, Code Whisperer is starting to suggest properties. So it's suggesting first name I've put in there and then last name, they should both be strings and it knows that. And then if I create a function called get display name, as soon as I type get display name and then put the user in, you can see Code Whisperer has worked out what the display name should be. And that's extremely cool. Like if you look at this string concatenation here, it knows the display name for this user should be the first name and then a space and then a last name. Because that is usually what a display name would be. It would be the first name and then a space and then a last name. And so it's really cool that it's done that entirely automatically using machine learning. We can do something similar where we just do function and then see what other functions the machine learning code whisperer suggestions brings up for us. So here you can see that it's suggesting we could have a get initials function, which returns the first character of the first name and then the first character of the last name. And actually the, the whole function there was suggested by code whisperer. If you go back into the developer tools on the left, you can pause the code whisperer. So then if we type things, it won't do any of the suggestions for us. And then you can start it again. So it's useful to pause it if it's getting a bit annoying. Um, start it again if you actually really need the helping functions of code whisperer. So that was a deep dive into AWS Code Whisperer. We explored how it works and we explored its core features and the myriad of programming languages that it supports. Just like GitHub's Copilot, Code Whisperer offers real-time predictive text for coding, but with the added assurance of AWS's robust architecture and broad compatibility, and importantly, free usage for developers. AWS Code Whisperer is a potent tool that can significantly enhance your coding productivity. It provides real-time intelligent coding predictions that are nearly always what you're about to type anyway. To explore more about AWS services and TypeScript and much more, then be sure to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. I'd love to hear your experiences with AWS Code Whisperer. If you have any questions or suggestions, then feel free to drop them in the comments section below. Until the next video, keep coding and exploring the new tools that come out in this exciting time of artificial intelligence. Yeah.